Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. a guy I really like talking to. That's Steve Kravitz. The reason I hey, like bro. talking to him is, A, he's funny, he's smart. What? And uh, I, I'm hot for him. No, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, you, how you doing, Mr. Kravitz? I'm doing all right. I went to a uh, baseball game on Saturday. Oh, really? An inaugural Season for the Worcester Red Sox. Oh, that's a probably a, um, a farm team. Yeah. 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 Triple A. Yeah. We lost. We lost eighteen to one. Oh, really? So yeah. how? Well, but how was it? How was the weather and stuff? Was it hot? Oh, it was beautiful. Oh, it was beautiful. Okay. Because beautiful. here it has just been unrelentingly hot and yeah. humid. We were lucky. We sat in the shade. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because here it was, and then yesterday, I'm walking down the street. I'm going for my walk. Right. Walk. 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 Right. Walk, walk. Right. And it's beautiful. All of a sudden, the the the, uh, the uh, humidity has gone away, and the temperature has dropped ten degrees, and it's just beautiful walking weather. And right. so I'm strolling down the street. I mean, as best I can without feeling wheezy, woozy, and tired. But I'm walking down the street, and as I'm about halfway on my walk. My watch goes off. It says alert, flood warning for ha- Harlem, and it's at really? like like you know 4:04 or something. It was like two minutes away. So I don't know. I kept walking. I said, you know, half the time they do these things, there's never a flood warning. Okay? Right. So I keep walking, keep walking, and I walk around, and I finally go. I have a. I stop into the Rite Aid to get some chocolate and stuff like that, and uh, I come out. And it is torrential. Really? And I've only got a block and a half to get to home. Right. Right? So I figured, ah, eh, what the hell, it's just water, right? Right, right, sure. You know? So I start walking. By the time I got home, every inch of my body was drenched. Like you went swimming. I, you know, one of those so bad that you can't get the T-shirt off because it's so wet that it's sticking right. to your body and you have to have somebody help you out of it. <laughs> and 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 the same thing was true of my pants, and the same thing was true of my shoes. The only thing that was still dry were pretty much were my socks, and that wow. was it. That was it, and uh, it was it was it was torrential. It was just I I I've never been in anything like that in a long time. How long did it last for? It lasted. I I don't know. I I went. I, I walked for about five minutes, and if in five minutes it was still going. So once I got inside, I think it started to s- slow down, and eventually it disappeared. But boy, right. it was that a ever a mess. Oh, just incredible. So, you know. dedicated to your walk. Good for you. Yeah, well, I you know so so much for my walk. I did a mile. I couldn't go any further because oh, and it was so bad. I wear earphones, right? Right. I wear these uh, Bluetooth earphones, right. and uh, it was raining so heavily, my Bluetooth earphones lost their Bluetooth signal. Really? And it's from my pants. You know, that's right. where I'm carrying the phone. It's from my pants, right. and it lost it. Lost it. It was it was just horrible. It was just something else. So I came home, took off all my clothes, and threw them in the dryer. Because I right. had barely used them at all, so I figured, what the hell, you know. Right. I look upon this as a wash. <laughs> I agree with you. What weather, like, I don't do well in humid weather. I just, right. I hate humidity. I just, right. I, I, do you know anybody that thrives in humid weather? No. No. So really, no. I think everybody would agree that humid weather is the worst weather of them, of them all. Right. 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 Yeah. Because the other day I went out and it was like seven ninety degrees, 
but it wasn't human. Right. And I'm just bop ba doop ba doop ba doop. Right? You know? Right. It's fine. Next day, 90 degrees, humid. I get walk out my front door and I go, I'm not going out there. And I turned around like it was it was a snowstorm outside. I turned around and came back in, you know. So right. No way I'm walking in that. Yeah. You know, so. No, I wouldn't walk in that. No. Oh, who's calling me on my watch? Nobody I know. You know, you know how many phone calls? How many do you, you get robocalls, right? Yes. Yes. Um, you own a car, right? Yes. I don't. How many of those calls says, by the way, your warranty is just running out? Oh, yeah. I get those all the time. And since I have nothing to do with my dull life, I figure I'll stay on the line and play with them for a while. <laughs> so yesterday, some guy, I get go on, I, I push two or whatever you got to push to get somebody. And I said, what's this all about? He said, well, you know, your insurance is running out. I said, by the way, uh, where, uh, where, where am I, where are you calling from? Right. And he says, uh, the Los Angeles area. And I said, okay, what's, just so I can check to make sure you're legit, what's the name of the Los Angeles baseball team? Fine. Click. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I love playing games with these guys. I, I, I'll keep them on for a half hour and then I'll tell them, by the way, I forgot to mention, I don't own a car. Right, 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 right. You don't need a car in New York. And I figure I'm wasting his time, but he's not wasting mine. I got nothing to do. <laughs> hey, man. Well, maybe he should get a hobby. Maybe he should get a hobby. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so that's, that's my that's my whole life with uh, uh, with uh, uh, the, the spam calls. The, the spam calls. Yeah. And I always get them when I'm doing a show here. And really? I, f I forget to turn off my watch. Okay. Turn turn off the ringer on the watch. So. Really. Yeah. What the hell? I don't have one of those fancy watches. Yeah. What that cost you? This, this was a, this is a, a this is a cellular version, so it cost me about five fifty. It, really? It, but I can make calls on it. I I don't need it, it, you normally with the Apple Watch have to have an iPhone, right? So that it works off the iPhone. It sends signals back and forth through Bluetooth. If you have one of the cellular versions, I can leave my phone at home and I can I can call you. You know. Really? And talk to you, yeah. Uh, I can do any one of a number of things with it. I mean, I can. What do you, Dick I, Tracy? Well, I can do all the things that I would normally do if I had Wi-Fi. So, yeah. And, you, Dick Tracy. And it's good because I use it when I'm walking. You know, I, I have it check how far I've gone. Right. Um, and uh, they they're coming up with uh, several new health features. One of which is a fall down feature. At my age, falling down is an eventuality, okay? Right. Just, you know, uh, because you lose all sense of balance and things like that. So what it does is it checks your balance as you're walking, and it lets you know when it says, hey, you know, you have a great chance of falling. Really? Yeah, yeah. No kidding. So that's in the new, that's in the new watch. It's not the new watch, but the new, what they call operating system. And, right. and also it'll check my EKG, and uh, the newer one, which I don't have, will ch uh, check my blood glu glucose level or something. I mean, right. it, it, they're making this watch so it does more than just, you know. It's like a mini computer. And it's also a mini health assessor, you know. The only problem is that it says, you know, you're close to a heart attack because your EKG isn't that great. Right. Then you go, well, now what do I do? Should I go see the right. doctor, or is this just my watch malfunctioning? You know, you right. don't completely trust it. So. I wouldn't. Yeah. I got to go in for a CT scan on Friday. CTs are okay. They're easy. Right. I can't do, uh, what do you call it, MRIs. Oh, when they put you in the tube? Yeah, I can't do that. I've, really? I've, I've got, literally, I've got... Uh, claustrophobia to the max. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So I just I I can't uh, I, I I can't do MRIs, but I can do CAT scans because it, it is 
it's it's not a tube. It's kind of like a donut. And you know that that I can do. Uh, all, right. And I figure all I need to do is maybe close my eyes. But man, I am I can't do an MRI. If they want me to do an MRI, I go. I'd rather die than do an MRI. Really. Really. That that claustrophobic. That that much of a phobia, huh? Yeah. I mean, if my wife hugs me too much, I get claustrophobic. <laughs> Really, it's it's true. Good night, everyone. I'm a del- I'm a delight to be with folks. I'm no fun at all. Well, that's not true, and you know it. Uh, well, no, I have this guy staying with me, uh, Albert. He used to be my producer here in New York. He's here with his wife. And yesterday we were talking, and uh, I said, uh, "Well, you know, I guess I used to be more fun." He said, "You never were fun." <laughs> <laughs> I can't name a day when you were fun. I said, well, I'll have to. I'll have to learn how to be fun. You were fun when we did the radio. Well, yeah, I mean, but that's that's me performing, right? You know, and and much you're like, you're, much like all of us. And I know that, in spite of the fact that you tried to kill Clint Eastwood, you're not a criminal. <laughs> you know, it's called acting. Yes. Yeah. So, in fact, my Albert asked me, I said I was going to do uh, Steve Kravitz do an interview with him. And he said, who's Steve? Because he never knew you from doing Sirius XM. Because yeah. I didn't, I wasn't able to find you at that point. Right. And um, I said, oh, yeah, he, he was killed by Clint Eastwood in a movie. And that is a good claim to fame, isn't it? My first movie. Yeah. And and the the car crashed, right? And everybody oh, in yeah. it died. All right. Okay. Yeah. Dying a flaming car crash. Right. Uh, who was it? Bruce Dern said his career was ruined after a, sh- a film called The Shootist, which was John Wayne's last film. And it's the only film in the history of John Wayne's history that he got killed by anybody in the movie. Really? Well, it's all about a, uh, a, 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 a marshal or former marshal. Uh, or guns fighter or whatever comes back to this town and he gets assessed with dying of cancer that he's he's dying of cancer right so that's what the whole movie's about Ron Howard's in it as the kid who befriends him and so on and so forth and in the end of the movie he gets killed which is kind of really? a happy which is kind of a happy ending in this particular case because he's a uh, you know um, so anyway uh, the guy who kills killed, him. He gets killed in El Toronto too. El Dorado? Did he really? Yeah. Oh, I thought I thought that. But anyway, uh, Bruce Dern killed him in that movie, and he said it hurt his career for quite a while because he was really? the guy that killed John Wayne. And John Wayne died shortly after that from cancer. It was, wow. his, it was his last film. It's a very good film, by the way. If you ever get a chance to see it. What's it called? Uh, it's called The Shootist. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll look for it. Yeah, yeah. The best Ron Howard film ever. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that, that I doubt. Uh, did they ever? Um, uh, did uh, did after Clint killed you? Did he say goodbye? Oh yeah. Really? He said pleasure working with you. No, he said nice working with you. Pleasure blowing you away. Did he say that really? Yeah. 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 Wow. So that was cool. Yeah. And I was standing with some friends because we shot in San Francisco that yeah. scene. Right. And they were all there to watch me die. And then I was hanging out with them, and he came all the way across and to talk to me in front of them. So that was cool. Sounds like he actually is a pretty nice guy. He was a great guy. Best film I ever did. Really? It was, yeah. and that one was called Sudden Impact. Sudden Impact. Yeah, yeah. And it was one of the Dirty Harry pictures. Right. Yeah. It was like, I think, the third or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, and, and they weren't going to send me in on the audition. My agent wasn't going to send me in because they were looking for a thug. And everybody in the uh, waiting room is dressed like a thug. And I'm just wearing my regular clothes. <laughs> And I got the part. <laughs> oh, boy. You must have been happy when you got that part. Oh, I was thrilled. Yeah, because that was your first film, right? 
Right. Right. And uh, what was your second film? Actually, I'm lying. My first film was Howard the Duck. <laughs> oh, yes. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. You're trying to make out with a woman and... Yes. Howard the Duck comes and beats you up or something? Howard the Duck comes flying through and I go, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah. So that, that, was it. that was your first line ever in movies is what the fuck. Right. 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 And uh, and that that movie I'm sure got you a lot of other parts. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that is maybe one of the most reviled movies of all time. Oh yeah. You know, and every time every now and then I'll go back, I'll see it somewhere, you know, like on HBO Max or something, you know. Uh, how are the duck? It can't, couldn't have been that bad. It is. And then I went to it. I watched it again. or tried to watch it. I only get about 10 minutes in. I don't even get to you making out. Right. Um, and I'm going, this is just horrible. I can't do it. Right. You know. Right. Uh, but they, miss, they misplayed Howard the Duck. Mm -hmm. Howard the Duck, you know, is a cigar-smoking, hard-drinking, womanizing duck. Right. right? Well, and also in the cartoons... Uh, he was really a duck, live, cartoon duck living in a human world. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, but here's what happened. So I, my association with that film is they come to me uh, and they say, listen, we need to get an audience over at the Warfield Theater on Tuesday. Because right. we're shooting a movie, Howard the Duck, and we need uh, an audience to be in this rock scene this, you know it's a big scene finishing scene in the film right and they said we'd like to get people over there and you have a large audience could you like just hustle people to go over there and come on down and be part of the uh, really? part of the film and I said sure so we did a whole thing that day promoting it and saying right after the show I'm going over to the Warfield Theater I want everybody to join me over there you'll be you'll be in a movie right okay and I show up, and uh, 500 people show up. No kidding. The place is jam-packed. If you look at the movie, that's the audience. I got them. Okay. Good for you. And now I'm st sitting there with the guy who is like one of the producers on the film. I can't remember who. It wasn't, wasn't Lucas. Right. Uh, but one of the people associated with the film. And they come out, and they got this guy in a duck suit. And he's prancing around doing some things, rehearsing, you know. Right. And I'm going, so uh, you're going to take that person in the duck suit and you're going to replace it. Because this was right after Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I think. Right. right. I said, you're going to replace it with an animated duck, right? Right. And they said, no, that's the duck in the movie. And I looked back at him and said, you're in big trouble. <laughs> Good <for you. laughs> yes. Good for you. Well, I mean, I wasn't making any money off the deal. I didn't need to kiss their ass, you know. Right, But I right, said, right. you're in big trouble. Because I said, you're not going to animate that duck? Right. And they said, no. Uh, and I either it was before or after uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I think it was after Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Same era. Yeah. But if they'd only done that, the picture probably would have been much more successful. Oh, yeah. But having Absolutely. a guy dressed as a duck just doesn't work. No. You know? No. And like we said, they misplayed his character. Yeah. But they used quite a few people from San Francisco. They used Monty Hoffman. Right. In that film. They used you. Who else they used? Anybody else I know? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. But uh, it gave, so that was your first actual movie. And I got to make out with a very pretty girl. Do you remember who it was? No. Really? She didn't become famous later on or something? No, no, no. Oh, no. okay. All right. Uh, uh, now, when you were making out with her in the film, were you actually doing tongues? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm a porn star. You, star, you sly little devil, you. Well? You know, today, if you did that, you'd be out of a job. I'm probably arrested. <laughs> so you're sitting there tonguing this girl going not bad job it's not no. a bad job no. no she right back reciprocated really yeah oh okay where is she today who knows 
I could look up her name and I could find it for you. It probably is there. You know? Really? You well, if so? I look up Howard the Duck on IMDb, I'm sure your name is there. I hope so. Monty Hoffman's name is there, and I'm sure Girl Getting Tongued is probably. <laughs> <laughs> but she had no lines. Oh. Well, then she didn't get a credit. Right. Right. Now, tell them, the one I love is you did a film called The Woman in Red. That's right. And that was with who? Who was the... Gene one? Wilder and uh, I think Gilda Radner. No, uh, Gilda no, might have been gone. No, no, that wasn't Gilda Radner. It was, it, was, it was the lady in red and the woman was, I'm trying to think of her name now. Oh, well. Anyway. Anyway. You did this film, The Woman in Red. Right. And uh, we're very happy for you. Right. right. You've got another movie. I think it was right. shortly after... Uh, after Sudden uh, Impact. The Sudden Impact. And um, we go to the theater, and you're nowhere in the film. Never stood in front of the camera. Never, st you, you never stood in front of the camera. You didn't even do the scene. Right. Right. What happened? They just said, we're not going to do it, go home? No, I got pushed back, it got pushed back, and finally they said, we're just going to cut it. Oh, okay. All right. So now you're really disappointed, but right. all of a sudden, here comes the movie. You're in the credits. Yes, sir. So I get residual checks. Yes. Probably still get them to this very day. Yeah, for like, you know, 25 cents. Yeah, that's right. You know, every, cents. every year I make about $71 off Bill Maher. Really? Yeah, because I, I was the voice on the opening of his One Night Stand. Really? And of all the One Night Stands they show, they always show Bill Mars because he's currently got a show on HBO. Right, right, right. So right, they keep sure. running that, running that. Every year I get a check for like $71. Well, it's better than not getting a check for $71. Yeah. I mean, do you still get, you, you don't get checks for Howard the Duck, do you? Sometimes from a foreign market. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah, because I, uh, I, I did, uh, I, I think Bill Maher every year has made me a little bit of money. You know, nothing to write home about, you know. But well, it's better than nothing. Yeah, it's better than nothing. It's better than getting a bill for $71 every year. Yeah, yeah. So can you think of any other great film you did that you really enjoyed doing? He's thinking. He's thinking. I really enjoyed doing all the films, to tell you the truth. Now, some were a little lower than B movies. <laughs> I did a film with Eric Estrada and Michael Pritchard. <laughs> <laughs> now, if people don't know who Michael Pritchard is, that's why I'm laughing. Right. Okay. Michael Pritchard was a San Francisco comic who... I never found him funny. I don't know what you felt, but he was a nice yeah. guy, nice enough guy, but, you know. Uh, I remember, I always like to tell the story about Michael Pritchard that we were in Union Square in San Francisco uh, singing Christmas music. It was a money-raising thing, right? Right. And Pritchard is standing next to me, and when we're singing, going through the snow and a one horse open sleigh and blah 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 I can sing that but when it comes to old little town of Bethlehem I'm a Jew I'm not singing that right I may be humming but I'm not singing it right I got gotcha. you and 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 Pritchard had been this major alcoholic and always made a big deal about how he quit the booze and the hooch and all of that right and, and he looks down at me as I'm humming old little town of Bethlehem and says oh come on Alex sing it couldn't hurt and uh -huh. I look back up at him, and he's tall. And I said, hey, Michael, have a drink. Couldn't hurt. Right. <laughs> that shut that's him up. Like, that's like I'm playing Vegas years ago. Mm -hmm. And Slayton is playing another room in Vegas. <laughs> and he comes to visit. And then he says to me, Kravitz, you are a lot funnier on drugs. <laughs> That's Slayton. That's the kind of encouragement you need. That's the kind of encouragement you need. Well, as a Jew, I just couldn't sing A Little Town of Bethlehem. I'm sorry. No, I, just like I, I felt Night. if I did, I'd burst into flames. Right, right. Mm. Same with Silent Night. Oh, oh, I'm, or maybe it was Silent Night. 
I think that was the song actually, Silent they Night, because it gets in the round yon virgin mother right. and child, and I'm going, geez almighty, that's ridiculous. Hey, look, we just ran out of time. Already? Yeah, we do 25 minutes. I do more with you than anybody. Cause, really? Because I enjoy it. Me too. You, you know? Yeah. You get yeah. decent feedback on it? Yeah, I do. Um, uh, and do I look well? Yes. Somebody last night said I look sick. No. No, okay. Not at all. I'm just trying to check and see how I'm doing. No, you look as healthy yeah. as you've always been. Hey, looked. listen, Steve Kravitz is going to be back with us next week, not because he wants to, but because I'm going to force him. Okay. okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and attractive Stephen Kravitz. Uh, oh, right over there. See him? See him? Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, well, well. Thank you, thank you, Steve Kravitz. We love having Steve on, as I always like to say. Uh, and I find him intelligent, and I find him funny, and I find him fun to talk to. And he's an old, old friend as well. So, Anyway, uh, and you're probably saying, well, where can I see him do his comedy? Yeah, yeah, nowhere. You know, we're, we're at, the, at that point where uh, we're just not doing that. By the way, I can adjust, you know, I can adjust me in this frame, and I, I do it occasionally uh, because I want to, you know, uh, uh, look better here, okay? So what happens is I take me and see, watch me go down here. There we go. Yeah. There we are. See? Isn't that much nicer? That, oh. That's a... Uh, that's a, you don't have to know how the uh, how the cows killed. Okay. Anyway, uh, it's time for me to now go to some of our callers, and we only have like about three people waiting online, uh, which is about par for the course at the beginning of this. And then uh, then I you know they go get some other stuff going here, and we're and we're okay. Let me admit the people who are here. Uh, to do to do to do to do as they start joining up. I will then go over to the, uh, oh, here, i got to change the view here. Do I really? Oh, to gallery? Son of a bitch. Occasionally, I have to change things here. And uh, there they are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got uh, over there, uh, that's, um, that's Jeff. And down there, that's Alan. And down there... Okay, that's, uh, that's Charlie. Let me tickle the top of Charlie. That head. Charlie looks so clear tonight. Huh? He, well, My new webcam. Well, you know why. I do know why, actually. I knew before you did. You no, know, I knew because he said so on the uh, on the chat. He said he got a new camera he's testing, and it's beautiful, Charlie. Yeah, I, I knew it last night. Did you know it last night, Alex? No. That's, that's what happened. Is my webcam died right in the middle of the show. The new webcam? Is this is brand new. Yeah. Hey, oh, you know what you got though? You've got you've got a. It froze up again. Now Charlie. we we'll get him to spend more money. He's got a Wi-Fi problem. Yep, I would think so. He's replaced the computer now the webcam, and he's frozen again. Yeah, look at that. See, that's what happens. That's what happens when you get the new camera. We were all going to do that so you'd feel better. Uh, now you're fine. You know what it is. Uh, now, do you uh, do you have? Are you on Wi-Fi or do you have a uh, a hard wire into your? I'm on Wi-Fi, and it says I have a nice strong signal. And the only problem I have is with Zoom. You, you know, no, you know what it could be. It could have something to do with people in your neighborhood. You could be on what's called a hub, and there this time of night they're using it a lot, and so they're sucking from you as well and slowing you down. Well, I'm in an apartment complex, so I mean, there's people all around us. Yeah, yeah, but uh, and you so sure? So far, you've replaced your computer and your webcam mm -hmm. and yeah. your internet router, and you still have the problem. Yeah, maybe the pro a brand new internet router. Maybe the problem is you. Have you thought about replacing yourself? <laughs> Occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> and look, Scott Boddicker has joined us tonight. Gee, Scott, I feel, what a it's privilege. Cool. Well, I heard you. I caught up on a bunch of old shows today. Yeah. Uh, from last week, and heard you 
kind of uh, uh, feeling down about lack of participation so i thought hmm. must be time for scott to come back in scott's always good about things like that you're you're very loyal scott i appreciate yes. it i love except, you man i love you yeah. except you should have been here three months ago when he was complaining about the same thing <laughs> well you know always complaining well night last night bob natale tried to call in and as he was trying to call in he was listening to the show and i think what he heard was um um uh, tony uh -huh. And and the left the just the the bad route this show took last night because yep. you shouldn't give that man any coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, he he was on fire, man. I don't know what got in his bonnet, but woo. But I mean, it, it wasn't good fire in his bonnet. You know, not like oh. he suddenly became very lucid and started talking about really important things. No, it was like my mom this and I am going to her grave this weekend and and people are t trying to talk about other stuff and he's just he's he's he, j he was he was on a on a uh, caffeine I, I almost crazy. left huh for, I almost left you almost left yes yeah yeah I was a little tired of it too it was Tony was over there. I almost left yeah <laughs> You try to get rid of him to shut and, up. And you know, I like Tony, and I want him on the show. And he's, of course, he's married to Kathleen, as you all know. And <laughs> and and congratulations! Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they're married. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, she's in it. She's in it for the money. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Huh? If that was money true, in the comic book, you the money. <laughs> <clears throat> the money in the comic books. That's a good combination. It's a killer combination, isn't it? Totally. He makes a ton on those comic books. Oh, listen. You know, I like to think Tony is an idiot. All right? He ain't no idiot. No, no idiot. No. no. When, he, just, uh, he just overdoes the no, caffeine. What, no, what he is is he is um, he's not worldly. That's, that's what he is, and we're mistaking stupid for not worldly. You know, I mean, he probably couldn't point out France on a map, okay? <laughs> he never heard of France. He never heard right. of France. <laughs> That's Damn. great. That's funny. Uh, but, it, you know, but but yet when it comes to selling comic books, man. He probably knows every coffee growing region in the no, world. No, but what I'm saying is this guy's probably got more bucks than any of us here. Yeah. They're buying. Yeah. All right? Because he, yeah. he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So tonight, guess what's wrong with me tonight? I have a slight stomach ache. Oh, gonadism. Mm. Yeah, it's all that coffee. <laughs> yeah, gonadism. That's it. That's your new favorite word, isn't it? I said, no, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm watching, I'm, I'm watching Fox day. yesterday. I'm watching Fox yesterday just to see what's up with Tucker Carlson. I haven't seen oh. Tucker since I, you know, did his show all the time. And I, as I turned over there, and it, he wasn't on, but a commercial was. And it was for low testosterone, and it said, better known as gonadism. And I went, this is a parody. This is a Saturday Night Live parody, okay? <laughs> because it can't possibly be that low testosterone, your testicles not giving out with, uh, with uh, enough uh, juice, as it were, is hypogonadism. And yeah, then I, right. he comes back from the commercial, and I figure yeah, it was just a, it was just a parody or something he was running. Alex, yeah. What did they say cures that? I'm I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> a good kick to the gonads. Oh, <laughs> it's it's this new drug called Rochambeau. Rochambeau, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he uh, the, yeah, it's a uh, it's uh, some kind of medicine or something you take, and yeah. it. Uh, Helps with gonadism. You listen. You listen to uh, uh, Tony for a half hour. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, when it comes to my gonads, they up and went. You know. So. It's not mine. Mine fall in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost got to pick them up, move them out of the way when I sit on the toilet. Otherwise, they're going to hit the water. I knew, and when I was working in Houston, Texas. There was a guy I knew who built a statue he put out in front of his house of a monkey with two brass balls. Oh, no. Okay. And he had it rigged 
So when it got below freezing, the testicles would fall into this big metal plate under him. Oh, wow. So you would know when, you know, it was free. You were, it, it, literally, you were freezing your balls off because this clank happened that on the statue. Funny. Oh, look who's calling tonight. Show yes. Me. Hmm? My hubby. Your, your, your hubby. Um, well, we were messaging today on Facebook. Yeah. Hopefully oh, you were messaging on Facebook. Today. Don't start with him on Facebook. He'll start sending you pictures of Scooby Doo. <laughs> I love oh. Scooby Doo. Iced tea. Iced Ice tea. Apple. Ice tea. Yeah. No coffee for you tonight. No, you got me all jacked up. You're right about Frank. Well, I got you all jacked up. <laughs> Doesn't take much to wind me up. I want to be a good boy tonight, so you, I'm please gonna... be a good boy. Last night you scared away Bob Natale. Who, was who gonna... is Bob Natale? Oh, that was oh the guy from Jersey. The, yeah, uh, the guy England. we the guy we like better than you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the guy we'd rather have on here better than you. You know, but you chased him away. <laughs> Some of the other ones also on the show. I don't know if you heard the first five minutes of the show. Tony said they were thinking about leaving. I won't name names. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a good boy. Oh, yeah. Jeff said he was thinking of leaving last night. I was thinking of leaving. I was going Just nuts. Like Alex, you'll burn anybody. <laughs> you should cut me off. <laughs> you on coffee is a dangerous, dangerous It is. Thing. I was up till 3 in the morning then. <laughs> I watched the rest of the basketball game. You know what I did last night to go to sleep? Uh, uh, I have a, a Albert's in visiting me, me and his wife. And they're staying here. And Ooh. he always brings treats from Florida. He brings... Uh, they're cannabis products, okay? Mm -hmm. And what he brought was some cannabis-infused gummies. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, sister, sister. And now I'm, I got to tell you, lately I'm, I, I don't smoke pot because if I smoke too much of it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't know why. It just makes me feel uncomfortable. Anxiety. So I'm very careful. I take maybe one puff and that's it. You know, and then, and I many times I was taking that nice pill for a while, and I stopped taking. I haven't taken it for a week, and it put me to sleep. I smoke a little bit of a pot, just a just a puff, just enough to make me go off to La La Land. Well, he brought these infused gummies, these cannabis infused gummies, and I took like a quarter of one last night, and I'm out like a light. Oh, where you are right to bed? Yeah, yeah, it really put me oh. to sleep. Don't you try it, Tony. We don't know how drugs will affect you. I'm, I'm tempted to try it one time. <laughs> My mother probably will. Well, if me. you like coffee, you'll <laughs> yes. really, you, if you like coffee, you'll really like cocaine. <laughs> really? Oh, I'd love it to, would probably I, put him to sleep. I'd love to see him on cocaine. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. Mama, I'm coming. We, Jeff would not overdose. call the program again ever, okay? I would be afraid to take it. We'd be afraid for you to take it, too. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really take any illicit drugs. What's the worst drug you've ever done, Tony? You know, I've never really done drugs other than if the doctor gave me something, and I can't count going to a Metallica show and like inhaling like the pot because it gave me it gave me a headache. I had to eat Burger King after that. Yeah, like, I didn't much. Much. of course. Nothing. No, I didn't. It didn't. Get, it it didn't. Get, it, it, I gotta eat something. I got a headache. Okay. Okay. Cool it down. Calm well, yeah, you're right. You gave me all jazzed up. Calm again. down. Calm down. <laughs> No, what happened, the reason you went to Burger King was because you were breathing in the pot. Hungry, Ox. It makes you hungry. It makes you hungry. Pop me in. Is it a munchie? I was going to go anyway, but I actually got another sandwich. I was like, I'm hungry. We're, we're discussing now the drugs that Tony has never taken. Okay. Actually, I've never taken any. My mother used to say, don't well, take any drugs or anything from strangers. Who am I going to go, Ma? Come on, will you? <laughs> Caffeine's a drug, Tony. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I, if that's I, my vice. If I were your parent, I would advise you that anytime some stranger comes up in a car and he asks you to get in, do. Okay. <laughs> Go away with me. He probably, he, probably, he, probably, he probably has candy, Tony. Mine's <laughs> black. Don't worry. Go. Trust him. You'll get sold. <laughs> and then a block later, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Black, exactly. No, Black later. no. Other than that, the guy gets a block him later. A, a, blo a block later, the guy will push him out of the car. Yep. <laughs> How come I'm making a circle? That looks like my house again. Get out. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't work, the guy that's driving the car has a noose to hang himself. <laughs> Take me to the police station. Anyway, so uh, you know. I, I was uh, I you know I, I finally decided we have to I, I want I want Trump I want Trump to get the presidency back. Really? Well, he gave us stuff nice. to talk about. He's such you a know. great guy. I mean, what, you know, why would anybody not want? Him well, I office? mean, you know, the, the one thing you can't say about Trump is that he was boring. No. You know. There were, if he if he went out and gave a speech, you sat there and watched it cuz you could sit there and make fun at it, of it. Yeah. I like the way he said China, Gina. Gina. Yeah. My mother hated it. He probably says China when he's talking oh, about a God. vagina. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the Kung Fu a flu. China. <laughs> the Kung Fu flu. I was like, oh, you wonder why these Chinamen are getting beat up here. The Chinamen? The Chinamen? Yeah. Do you go into a restaurant and say, hello, Chinamen? No, I, I want to buy I some change. What is this with you, Tony? Sometimes I have to get to pick up the food the other day. Yeah, use the word. No way I can assure on. Come on already. Well, yeah, how they sit there with no heat? They can assure. Oh, here he goes. Fans again. blowing. He's not, I mean, he's come not, on, you're my shit already. It, it wasn't even the coffee last night. No, I it wasn't. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be good because I don't want to. Okay, here. shut up for the next ten minutes. <laughs> you're right. I'm I know. I told. I told Tony. Alex almost sent you to time out. Yeah. Yeah, either that or get you in that car with that guy with the candy. But where's Robert Natali? We haven't seen him in a long time. Well, he'd been writing a book, he said. But last night he thought he'd call in, and then he heard what was going on, and he decided, eh, fuck that idea. Yeah. <laughs> Tony scared him away. What the hell? Hello, John Larkin. How's everything in the Tenderloin? I mean, I don't mean that in any sexual way. Hey, hey pretty good. You know, um... We were talking about the Mitchell brothers um, last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I dug this picture up. Let me uh, kind of cover it up because. Let me see. Ah, uh, it's you and uh, who's the woman? Who is the woman? Is she naked? Yeah. Yep. And is that, yeah, that is. is that you, you her, Alex? You interviewed her. How much did that oh, cost? Let me see here. A Polaroid. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who, who, who is that? I can't. I can't really tell. I'm not very good at figuring that well, out. Uncover the tits. Oh, that no. Oh. Who is it? You know who it is? Alex just wanted to see the tits. Alex, you know who that is? You interviewed her many times. I'm sure I did, but I'm trying to remember That's who she Marilyn is. Marilyn Chambers. Remember is all that Marilyn? tits look alike. Is that yeah. Marilyn Chambers? Wow. Yeah, really? about 1987. Yeah. Well, uh, if, uh, if, uh, oh, if she signed it, if, yeah. If they're yeah. if they if they're getting mad at us at uh, at uh, at, uh, at uh, YouTube over over that, uh, blame it on th Tony. Those aren't really breasts; they're fake. Okay. Yeah. So, my mother. They're Lee Press On. <laughs> Lee, Lee Press, press on. on porno length. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marilyn and I uh, were going to start dating. Wow. She, uh, we, we got together once and she started talking and she says, really, I'd like to go out with you and have some, spend some time with you next time I'm in San Francisco. And I said, great, we'll do it, you know, because I always liked Marilyn and she was terrific. Oh, yeah. And it wasn't a matter of, of you know, having sex with Marilyn Chambers, all that might have happened. But it just that, you know, I liked her. She was a nice lady. And uh, yeah. uh, before she could get back up, she died. What did she die of? She just, I, I don't know what it was. It was something mysterious. It just happened all of a sudden. He had a really abusive What's the testicle disease. What? Gonadism. Her, her, her husband was really yeah. abusive to her and what, are ripped you? her off. And she, she really loved him and didn't leave. But uh, Wait a minute. Which, which, which husband? I, I guess the, the last one. The last one? Well, the one that she was married to well, when, he, he, when she died. He, she wasn't, <coughs> no, she wasn't married when she died. Well, I, I, I read there was an article in. You're not, the Daily th you're not thinking about uh, about Linda Lovelace's ex-husband. No, no, yeah, I think that's because she married she, she married Linda Lovelace's ex-husband. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Chuck Trainer, who I yeah. who I knew quite well. And, and he was a bad and, guy. He abused her. You know? Well, uh, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. Um, uh, uh, Chuck was uh, Chuck. 
did have something he could do. He 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 could hypnotize them. Really? Yeah, and he had them in his power through hypnosis. Okay. Now, if he had them in his power through mm -hmm. hypnosis, he probably had no reason to beat them to submit to his way, as it were. But uh, uh, Marilyn, uh, rather Linda, dumped him because uh, Hugh Hefner convinced her that she should dump him, and he dumped her. Uh, she dumped him, and she immediately went out and picked up on Marilyn Chambers. Charlie, and Marilyn was kind of a robot you need a when sign I knew, like this. When I knew her at this time, I was going to go over to Charlie. I see his hand. Okay. Yes, Charlie. Marilyn Chambers, according to Google, mm -hmm. died from complications of heart disease. Yeah. Shit. How old was she? Fifty-six. He was yep. young. Yeah. Young. Yeah, nice looking. Home. Yeah, that is young. Yeah. Jeez, oh, I only got a few years left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I died 15 years ago. <laughs> well, you didn't have the same rack that she has. <laughs> there was, um, mm -hmm. I read an article last year in uh, the Daily Beast about her, the end of her life, and it was uh, the, the article kind of portrayed it as sort of a sad ending. You yeah, know? she she <laughs> didn't have any money. Yeah, uh, she was yeah, uh, and. Uh, and they kind of no blamed her she on her ex you, Alex. Yeah, I could have been husband number three. Yeah, or four. Anyway, other than that, the tenderloin's the same. You look different, yeah. did you? Good, fast internet. Yeah. <laughs> Rub it in. Are you rubbing it into Charlie? <laughs> Thanks <Good> a lot. <laughs> now, Charlie, do you have more than one uh, supplier for internet if you want another one instead of the one you've got? Yeah, but I, according to them, I've got a, a incredible signal. It's nice, strong signal. I don't have any trouble with YouTube or movies or Netflix or HBO Max or any. I, those go fine. Uh, you know, somebody it doesn't need, do. it, your 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 um, uh, internet connection doesn't even have a sense of humor because when you started going through that, it should have started breaking up. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> yeah. But it. Didn't. You know, Charlie. Charlie wears the coolest. T-shirts. <laughs> I got nothing else to do. I'm retired. And and resistance is not futile, futile, and uh, that is uh, let's see, that's an ohm, right? Yes, uh, resistance. That's resistance equals voltage, voltage over divided over by current. current. Uh, yep. How is that divided futile? by current? Okay. You know, in Star Trek, they always kept saying the Borg always kept saying resistance, resistance is futile. Resistance is not. Yep. It's not futile. Yeah. The board, the board. Board, remember? The so, board. so Alex, you know all about this stuff. The resistance and volts and current. What is the, what is the formula called? What? What is the formula called for resistance, voltage, and uh, uh, amps? Hey, I just know how to stick these wires okay. together. I oh, don't. It's called, <laughs> it's called Ohm's law. Oh, okay. Ohm's law. Okay. Who's he? Um, Is that right, Jeff? You guys are correct. Yeah. Some of us people that went to school. Ohm, Ohm on the range. For engineering. Yep, Ohm, uh, Ohm on the range. <laughs> Where the bolts go. Charlie's the best. They have a they have a they have a new home on the range. If you live in the Tenderloin, it's Homo on the range. Oh, oh, now we're getting now we're now we're getting gay people mad at us. No, no, not at all. And I've always had a good reputation in the gay community. No, they I, don't give, I give one hell of a blowjob. Uh, no, uh, you give one or get one. He said give. Oh, he gives one hell of a blowjob. There you go. Take the dentures out and gum them, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, uh, tonight I was mentioning uh, Michael Pritchard, and somebody on our, uh, what do you call it, our chat room, said that Michael Pritchard, he's right, was the big guy who danced with Judd Hirsch at the, on Taxi at a gay bar episode. Oh, I love Do you remember that episode? Yeah. Yeah, that Taxi was Michael was Pritchard who was dancing with him. Which had to be very funny because Pritchard was a big, it. huge guy. You know. uh. It would have been funnier with Danny DeVito. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> Where Danny DeVito played his boyfriend. So anyway, our president today uh, was on his way to Europe because yes. he's given a whole bunch of speeches over there and he's going to the G, what is it, the G7 now? Uh, you never can tell. Sometimes it's the G8. Yeah. Sometimes it's the but, V8, which is all these juices blended together. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, but anyway, he was going there and he got attacked. Yeah. By a cicada. Oh, Did yeah. you see that? Yeah. Where oh, was the uh, Secret Service when you needed it? Well, them? no. <laughs> as soon as uh, the cicada attacked him, he went like this. It fell, and they tackled it to the ground. Right on. <laughs> Surprised they didn't open fire with machine guns and kill it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so uh, but he laughed about it. He laughed it all off. But I'm mm. sure over at over at uh, over at MSNBC they were saying. How well he handled the whole situation. Right. And I'm sure over at Fox, they were saying, oh, look at him. What a wimp. Look at how he handled that situation. He was terrible. Well, the cicada would have never... a ping pong racket. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. The cicada would have never uh, gone after Trump. Uh, they just don't eat their own. <laughs> okay. All right. I think the more important thing yeah. was that he's giving... Millions of these pills. Five hundred. He's giving injections. five hundred million. Other countries. Five hundred million. And yes. for, for a yes. while there, we couldn't get any. But do you know what's happening? Some of those pills that I think mm. he's going to give away are the ones that are running out of time. There's expiration yeah. date. They're uh, not pills, but the shot. Shot. Yeah. Are hitting yeah. their expiration date. Yeah. That's kind of uh, fucked up. So am I, by the way. But the uh, expired or fucked up? No. No, that they're expired. almost expired. Yeah. Oh, almost expired. <clears throat> yeah. Use them quick. But anyway, and then he went over and he gave a speech at uh, <clears throat> in front of some uh, uh, some soldiers, I think. <clears throat> and, yeah. And he's going to be over there, and then he's going to talk to Putin next week. <laughs> he's a, he, he, claims, he claims he's going to read him the riot act. No, he's not. You don't think so? No, I, I think that he wants uh, support from uh, Putin. And Putin basically doesn't need Trump anymore. You know, he was Putin's puppet for four years. Now he doesn't. I mean, Putin's not stupid. He used Trump. Trump bought into it. Trump's gone. And now it's time for Putin to move on. He's not an idiot. Well, he's got to deal with Biden, and Biden doesn't like the idea that, you know, that all these uh, these uh, uh, ransomware things are happening from, mm -hmm. from Russia. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know that I don't know that the government can stop a lot of that, you know. Um, his, the Russian government? Yeah. Oh, believe me, if Putin doesn't want something going on in Russia, it doesn't yeah. go on in uh, Russia. Somebody could be writing it here, and the government would take months. They, they, they assigned it to the FBI. It'd take a year before they found the person. Although I gotta no, say, no, they I... know who they are. Oh, they okay. know exactly who they are. Oh, okay. You know, and and uh, uh, there are two groups actually, and their names for them. I can't remember the I'm names right now, and they know who they are. They because there are there are certain things in uh, in code coding these things, these ransomware things, mm -hmm. that um, uh, seem to be like fingerprints. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, isn't that what it is? A digital fingerprint. Yeah. By the way, hello to uh, Mr. Neary. How are yeah, you this good. evening, sir? I'm good. Yeah. How's everybody? I'll start eating now. Fine. Uh, how, 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 how have you been? You get to our show a little late now, I think, because the sun is still up when we start the show and you want to get out there and see some of it. Yeah, I've been working a little bit late. Some of the projects are all coming at the run around the same time so uh try to get out and get some exercise play a little basketball in the house so well, you've also yeah. got that china project going right yeah and they're starting to get trained so that and then india is doing training right now in the morning and yeah everything is starting and then to, by uh, the evening they're all dead right <laughs> yeah. yeah no <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah, one one guy he wakes up like at three o'clock for a meeting. Well, in the here's morning. the thing. Here's three. the thing. Mar <laughs> Marjorie works for the Chinese, mm -hmm. so she goes to work at six in the morning, mm -hmm. and works mm -hmm. till about three in the afternoon. The reason is is that at six in the morning is six at night in China. 
Yeah. And if she were to like go there and work till five, like nine to five, she'd never be able to deal with any of them. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I mean, yeah. that's you probably have to do the same thing. Yeah, the biggest thing is the no travel stuff. So here we have the machines. They have the machines actually set up right because you know we gave them we gave them a drawing where to put everything, and they have engineers there, so they're going through all of our report qualification reports. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is tribal knowledge, you know. From a startup, we didn't document a lot of this also. Yeah. But now, now they're actually they have the machine, and they actually made parts. They made parts last week, and we got the parts. They have a couple small issues, and we're working those out. So that's the stuff we wish we could be there to, you know, go through the stuff. But it's amazing how much stuff they're doing. And China's right behind them. They're starting to get stuff done, too. So. Well, you can go to China. There's just one problem. Yeah. Before you can even go outdoors, you have to be indoors for two weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, th that happens with the Marjorie's guys. They A lot of them work, used to work out of Beijing or go to Beijing regularly because that's where the company is headquartered. And now they don't go because they're going to have to sequester themselves for two two weeks. Um, so yeah. yeah. So how are you doing uh, with and, your but, man? But the nice part is the nice part of it is uh, after you spend those two weeks, you get a free dinner at the Wuhan market. So. <laughs> <laughs> a bat sandwich. Bat sandwich. Yeah. A bat sandwich. There you go. Yeah. 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 But they, you know, in Vietnam, when I went, they have all kind of you know, the sparrows, you know, those little birds. Yeah. The sparrows, they have those on a stick that they barbecue and all this weird oh. stuff. And I'm like, no, thanks. Sounds Spar good to me. Yeah. Uh, Isn't that what PETA's for? The group PETA? People, they eat, PETA. <laughs> people <laughs> eating tasty animals. No, that's not what it's Not in for. Vietnam. They don't have PETA in Vietnam. Oh, well, that was that was humor. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody else laughs about it, not this group. <laughs> yeah, uh, now that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. I wonder what that's that, gonadism. Hey, Monica is on here. What's up, Scott? Hey, how's yeah, it going? Did you see it? <laughs> hey, you just <laughs> noticed that. Huh? I know. Well, at night time, I've seen him on the, the afternoon show Monday. So, well, he's he on the a lot of night, but I. I I quit when the group got too big and Tony was talking too much. <laughs> yeah, and and Phil kind of scared you away too. Yeah, that that was that was you, a big you, factor too. You, I almost you, forgot about you that. You used to get really uh, irritated at yeah, listening to him, so it wasn't good for your health. No, no. But you know, this group is kind of copacetic, don't you think? Oh, yeah. As long as we yeah. keep Tony from talking. <laughs> Because once he starts up, you know. No, I'll break this. Oh. <laughs> message Tony. That's when you can't keep up. Oh. Man. Because I will message yeah. Tony. I'll message Tony, and I love Tony. I message Tony, and then I get in my car and I start driving. And by the time I'm stopped, he's got like 20 messages all over. No, what, no, what, but Tony, <laughs> what, what Tony hasn't <laughs> learned is that you write a message and then that's it. You don't write a message in five different messages. Yeah, that's how I think. Yeah. Because, Do at least in my case, because my watch here uh, is is set so that every time I get a Facebook message from somebody, yep. it, it, it buzzes my wrist and goes ding. So now Tony starts writing something, and then it's buzz ding, buzz ding, buzz ding, <laughs> buzz ding. <laughs> I couldn't get yeah. him to stop doing it. So I, I finally banned him from Facebook, from Facebook. He can't message me on Facebook anymore. Well, today, you know, my dad goes, when we get a chance, can we sit down? I go, well, let's sit down now because in an hour I'm going to be on Alex's show. And he goes, well, what are you doing now? And I go, I'm messaging my husband. And my dad goes, what? <laughs> and I go, I go, yeah, dad, I'm married he goes who is this guy and i go oh his name's tony and i he's really nice and he's smart and um <laughs> he's a nerd like me and he's never done drugs or done drugs and my, he's never done drugs or drank and my dad goes well i did drink why okay. don't you marry him and i go dad it's a joke and tony's in the bronx in new york queens yeah yeah queens, queens. queens. Yeah. I'm drinking with 
Take that, he's got a million dollars worth of comics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's my son. I told my son, if when we go to New York, who do you want to see first, Alex or Tony? And he goes, Tony. No. <laughs> Both my son really? and I have comic book collections, so my son just, he's like 10,000. How, how do you get 10,000? I said, well, you start really young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Sh Shecky has a good bunch of comics, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. He has a good collection. Yeah, he has quite a few. You know now. what he has? What Shecky has that he never talks about. I should talk to him about it next time. I'm he has a couple the, of other nice things. I'd rather no. have him say that. No, like. he, yeah, he, he collected cool. baseball cards. Yeah, he got into the yeah. And he yeah. supposedly has a baseball oh. card collection worth a fortune. Wow. But you know what he has that's really nice? I guess I can say, because I don't like to talk about other people's collectibles. He has original artwork that I got into now. Oh, where yeah, yeah. Raw stuff. I, I will never sell that. Like, I have some stuff, like, signed and stuff like that. Yeah, but I he he figures, he, I, I, I asked him stuff. once, how much do you think stuff. this stuff is worth? And he says, I don't think it's worth much of anything, because it's just original artwork they did signed. So you know, it's not it's not the actual comic book artwork or anything like oh, that. Oh no, he actually has a sketch of uh, like some artwork actually original from the artist. If yeah. you go if next to his next to him to show it to you, he has a couple of nice pieces. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Original artwork and stuff like that is really you can't even put a price on it really. You really can't. Yeah. Yeah. Well I've got the like combo comic books. You can put a price on it. Yeah, I've only got yeah, I've only let's see, I've only got three things here. That fall in that category. One is a Mickey Mouse animation cell you were saying of the of a commercial that Mickey Mouse did in Europe for Fanta. And it's one of a kind, then, right? Oh, Adam? I remember. That. You remember that? Somebody yeah, gave do. it to me. Then somebody Brennan also Stimpy. gave me something else. Ren and Stimpy. Any, anybody remember the? We'll get to Ren and Stimpy. Anybody remember the Frito Bandito? Yeah, you were saying? Oh yeah. Well, that was created and car, uh, and animated by Tex Avery, one of the oh, nice. greatest animators yep. of all time. And I have a s animation cell over here, the Frito Bandito. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I have a very nice little pencil drawing uh, done by the people at uh, Ren and Stimpy. Oh, that's nice. Um, um, uh, with a kind of a personal message to me. Uh, and I think it has. I think it was signed by. It was signed by two people. I think one of them was Chris Felusi, the guy who produced the show, created the show. But uh, you know, that's that's the that's the uh, sum total of my art. You know, in that respect, because I never collected that kind of stuff. Alex, did you meet any famous artists like when you were in New York? Like, did you ever interview anybody on the show? Was gonna well, you're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna actually probably for the first time in your life when I tell you this, jerk off. Um, We're probably right. Yeah, I yeah. A, Who is I, it? A cool photo. I hosted the Spike Lee, Spike Lee, uh, Stan Lee, years oh. ago, asked me if I would host the Comic Book Awards show. Mm. And they used to get together once a year and give out <laughs> awards to each other. And that evening, I think I met every well-known, legendary cartoon. Uh, I think Kirby was there. Oh, I would have I know to that, wow. uh, uh, what's his name, the guy did Batman, uh, uh, Bob Kane. Well, Shecky says he didn't do him, Bob Kane. He was really the other guy. Well, no, 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 but, no, but Bob Kane, nevertheless, was the guy he, I mean, I still that was considered the guy yes. that did, yeah. did Batman. God, you could just imagine that in that room. I would have went nuts. I wouldn't have went right over to Also, Kirby some of the I'm younger there. guys who are now older guys who were doing Superman and stuff like that. I mean, you would have just, you would have had a, yeah. an orgasm if you were in the room with all these people. Uh, I would have did anything if you would have got me in that. And, just and it, was, it was completely wasted on me because I didn't care that much about comic books. That you know, like I never collected them when I was a kid. But I did like Batman, so I was impressed by beating Bob Kane and... And um, uh, God, who was that other guy? He became very famous later on. He was a kid at the time. But anyway, um, I, I emceed that show, and I remember it. I, you know, but it meant nothing to me. And you said Stan was very nice, Alex. He, he's very. Well, Stan cool. and I were friends. He seemed like you were saying he seems like he's very like like a genuine yeah, type guy. At least he, he was very he was very thing. amiable. You know, there's some question about his contribution, you know, to comics, but that. 
certainly the fact that he put uh, Marvel on the map yeah. is enough to give him credibility, you know. Uh, but the, everybody would like to say that Jack Kirby was really the inspiration behind most of that stuff. But uh, Stan never drew any of that stuff. Stan yeah. was the writer who wrote the balloons, <clears throat> you know. So uh, Kirby was the guy that did all the uh, all the uh, uh, actual cartoons. Yeah, I would have went nuts over Kirby. I would have went right over to him. Well, yeah. I've been embarrassed, but I would have yeah. tried to get Jack it Kirby was a brilliant, brilliant. Man. Oh yeah. But yeah, I mean, I would have went crazy. I would have actually get me your autograph if you let me get in to see Jack <laughs> just for five minutes. Let's see here, uh, Steve Lasser shown, who probably is Oscar Levant, said maybe Robert Natali heard the fat guy. No, oh, now you're the fat guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Alan will always be the bobblehead guy for me. Uh, and I heard, heard the fat guy say that George Moscone was in the mafia with the fat guy's only reason for saying that was because he was Italian. That's that's right. He's He paid you pretty well on this. Uh, yeah, I, I have no problem. You know, uh, and not all people that are, are Italian are in the mob. That's like, for instance, Tony's Italian, right, Tony? Alex, my mother, she was never in the mob. No, I know your mother wasn't in the mob, but my you're, father's you're, never in you're, the mob. Itali you're Italian, yeah. right? Oh, you don't get that stereotype. I'm not going to lie. You know what my mom used to say? My uh, dad's Will you just but... shut up and let me ask oh. you the question? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because I'm going to start rattling again. Go ahead. <laughs> you're Italian. Have you yeah. ever known anybody in the mob? Okay, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> not in my family, Okay. But when my aunt passed away, the one you made me cry, I don't know if this is true, okay? <laughs> but one of the, one of her tenants upstairs, I don't want to say his name, but I think he she always thought he was connected somehow. I'm, Wait, not I'm, I'm asking you, is there anybody but in no, your family, in family that no, was in the no, mob? No, no, and there's, no, it's a very simple, well, hey, hey, Tony, no. very simple, yes or no? No. Okay, thank you. Now, yeah. on to other things. Yeah, I I love the I love the aunt that made you that made you made him cry. I love the the record. that was my aunt. Yeah, who she forever. But then again, she always was a half. She was crazy, my aunt friend. She always thought anybody who was like you know, you think he's connected? I remember mean, I was like, you're crazy. Oh, yeah. I, I make a big mistake. Gypsies. I bring him into the conversation. Yeah, you can't hear. <laughs> but can I say one thing and then? I'll, well, my grandmother, no. grandmother passed away. One thing? I bet it's going to be 20 things, just like your posts to me. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Well, when my uh, the one you made me cry with, my Aunt Fran, my godmother, uh, when my, their mom passed away in the late 70s, they actually had one of those, what do they call those ladies who come to the house and they put the, the tarot readers, right? Yeah. And she yeah. actually, she was into spiritual. She wanted to talk to her mother again. It, you know, they, she came to the house. She was into all this. Stuff. Where is this like, all coming know. from? I just asked you for a simple yes or no, and I'm getting like a whole thesis on Italian yeah, you're right. culture. Where that came from? It was on my mind again. Yeah, was, yeah I'm sorry about that. I, I, grew up, I, I grew up in an all Italian mm -hmm. neighborhood. I grew up in, in North Beach in San Francisco. Yeah. which now then became very Chinese, but it was very much an Italian neighborhood. So Italian that I would go to my friend's house and you go to the basement and you smell grapes because they had these big vats. <clears throat> every, every Italian basement had a big vat where they made wine. Yeah, Brian. Uh, on the new, it was Pride Month this month and on the news, mm -hmm. the gay, you know, the whole LGB, all the letters, um, that group, the, the Castro District, mm -hmm. they are complaining now because too many straights are moving in. They see yeah, too many yeah. families walking it's around, so the news, they did a big thing on them. Really? Yeah, too many? They're, they're, too many. Because the Castro's turning straight. Whoever and said that the Castro had to be gay? Exactly. <laughs> Well, but, you, you know, know, the only reason it became gay is because that's where the bathhouses were, and that's where AIDS got very uh, virulent. Yeah. These old white fat guys stand around naked now, like over by on, on the corner there, and they piss off all the yuppies, you know. <laughs> I got to tell that, you, that's you, where I saw you before, John. <laughs> what's that, what's that? What's that fair they hold in San Francisco? Fulton Street Fair, is that it? Folsom, yeah. yeah. Folsom Street Fair, yeah, Folsom. Uh, and it's nothing but gay guys. I swear to you, no, folks. No, there's a lot of there's a lot of S and M people. Well, in uh, chat. 
They're all in shock. Well, wait, 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 wait. Exactly. Here's what I was going to say is you go down there for this thing weather. and everybody's like gay pride and all of that and they're wearing these look. assless chaps. Yeah. And it's not like guys with cute asses either. It's big hairy butts. Yeah, but there's, there's a lot of sexy women that show up doing yeah. leathers and I, uh, I go but just to watch the women. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm like a bird, you know, I've got my little camera out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. little, I mean, I don't, I, I really, you know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, Alex, uh, you mentioned S and M. Does that stand for stand and model? What? Spaniards <laughs> and Mexicans. What is S and M? S and M is sadomasochism. Yeah. Oh. People that like to get spanked and whipped and <laughs> hung upside down. And oh, or were you, were you like being, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it. Oh, that. they're in pain. Oh, oh like look at the background for Ray Renati tonight. <laughs> what is he doing? Ah. Oh, I remember that guy. I remember that, that guy. guy. Who is that guy? I know I that guy. The, the that best guy. cocksucker in San Francisco. Oh, shut up. Will you please? That guy Jeez. wouldn't talk to me. Earlier. That guy's an app. He wouldn't talk to me. He's very stuck up. Who? Oh, Alex? The guy in the background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the, uh, when you were on 9th Street. The flip Yeah. Dog. Well, that was my live 105 photo. Yeah, on nights yeah. when you're on Ninth Street by the. That was on the billboards. On huh? That was on. That was on the billboard. You're right. Yeah. yeah. On Ninth Street. When the studio yeah. was on Ninth Street. It was on Ninth Street. Um, yeah, the, yeah, it was the when Quake. we were on Ninth Street. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But where at on Ninth Street? There's. It, it's where the, uh, it's where the uh, Cadillac Bar and Grill is now. It's like between Mission and Market. Yeah, well, I had about they, I had about uh, two hundred billboards with that picture on it all over wow. San Francisco. Yeah. I had some friends that lived on Ninth Street. But I, I got so sick of looking at myself. I was going to say, Ninth Street, get is, Ninth Street is almost. There I am again. <laughs> it's almost too Van Ness. Van Ness, it's like a, it's no, Ninth it stops at Market. Yeah, and then Van Ness is the next street over. Or, yeah. No, Two streets. Let's see. What kind of numbers are we getting with giving directions in San Francisco? <laughs> we it's lost like the street. I, yeah. think, I think everybody wants to see you in your assless chaps. Did I get that I one? That one Ass, assless chaps? I don't think that would be something you'd want to see. No, probably not. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't. Tony's Googling it right now, and he's going to get some. <laughs> I'm actually reading the LeBron. I had to call in when you were talking about the Italians. I'm an Italian. You're an Italian, aren't you? I don't think of you as Italian, but Renati is very Italian. <clears throat> yeah, I'm almost all Italian. Do you know? That, do you know? Yeah, really? Do you know that the two of you can go to Italy and immediately buy property, and and you're automatically citizens because you, I know. And, and you have to and, like show a modicum of Italian fluency, just a little bit. No, and not even fluency. Not even fluency. It, no, no, no. I mean, you just have to know a few words, like like basic, and then as long as your grandparents were Italian, you're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, as long as you, it it can go back, your family tree can go back to Italy. Like four, five generations, ten yeah. generations, they don't care. Just as yeah. long as your family tree goes back to Italy, in which mm -hmm. case you can go to Italy tomorrow, buy property, get a passport, Italian passport, yeah. immediate citizenship, and you, you know, you, you, you know, you, you're not, you're an American Italian, right? You were born and raised yeah. here, right. right? Right. But my, my grand, one of my same thing with you, Tony. Born. In fact, why don't you yeah, start? My grandma, why don't you start packing right now? We're go, we're going to we're going on the 25th, and I've already told Katie I'm going to try to get my really? uh, my my passport, my Euro hey, passport hey. through Italy. Yeah. Alex is sending your stepdad back to Italy. That's not nice. <laughs> It's that guy. What are we gonna do? So, so far, the show has three Jews and three three Italians. Yeah. And a shiksa. That wow. means we're all like self self flagellating, neurotic, uh, religiously just screwed up people. I, I, we're going at it. He's been on Folsom Street lately with those words. Yeah, but my my question is, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Sp Scott, what's your background? Uh, it's German, both sides. German, That's both sides. That's why he's so mellow and like you know, 
even keeled. Yeah, I think it's the bourbon that he's out. Uh, and, 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 <laughs> and, and Kathleen, you, you, if I remember, you're like Nordic or something. Totally. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's a Viking. Six foot four woman yes. blonde like that. What do you think? She's a Viking <laughs> stock. I, yeah. I go to I go to Sweden when I go to Sweden for work. Yeah, when I go when I go to work here in Sunnyvale, they're all Asian and they're like this tall. Then I go to Sweden, they're all tall blondes. Like, oh my god. Yeah, wow. yeah. But uh, you're 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 yeah you're you're no. And, and, what about Larkin? What is he? Is he Jewish? Is he Italian? Irish. 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 Okay. Irish. Yeah. So, well, actually, no you know, bring him back to Castro for a minute. In San Francisco in the 50s, it was a big Irish neighborhood. It was. Yeah, that's right. Charlie, what are you, what, what are you, what, what's your background? I mean, you know. He's Jewish, can't you tell? And Italian. There are black Jews. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. are. Haven't you heard of Did Sephardic he Jews? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're black Jews. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, let, we'll let Charlie answer, though. Charlie, do you have any other background, though, besides, say, oh, we, you're, you're muted, muted, Charlie. You're muted, Charlie. Oh, we lost Charlie. No. Unmute yourself. Charlie, you're have Unmute to yourself. The I don't know how I got muted. I didn't mute me. Well, Alex did. No, I didn't mute him. <laughs> <laughs> No, yes, uh, I have Scottish in my background. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. I thought you looked Scottish. Have you ever met people from Hawaii and asked them what their background was? And they're like 12 different things. Well, I'm part Scottish, part black, part American Indian. I'm part, know, he's, uh, he's part Polynesian. Uh, Polynesian. <laughs> I mean, 12 different things. Absolutely. We're all That's African, okay? Yeah, really. Go back far well, enough. well, you go back far enough, we are all African. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Some of us just spent not enough time in the damn sun. That's Absolutely. about the only difference. Actually, my heritage is Neanderthal. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> by the way, interesting. You always hear about Neanderthals, uh, especially when we're referring to Tony. Uh, <laughs> Stop picking on Tony. But but yeah. do you re do you realize that regular man existed at the same time as the Neanderthals? Yeah. And they mated. Yes. Well, they didn't mate. I think they may have, but do you they know? They did. We have some, yeah. Yeah, we have genes. Yeah. Well, then, so, and, yeah. and ergo Tony. But anyway, <laughs> uh, 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 the thing was that the Neanderthals uh, disappeared because they didn't have a social structure. And uh, they got pushed to the ocean, basically, and that's where they completely died out. But they had no social structure, so they didn't, they didn't maintain the Neanderthal, and eventually they were taken over by the, uh, by the, I guess Europeans or whoever was there at the time, the non-Neanderthals. Yep. And so uh, the Neanderthals oh, died because of lack of, so, of social. Homo uh, sapiens. Huh? They're called the Homo sapiens. Well, I, I think the Neanderthals were Homo sapiens. No, they were Homo. They? No, we're Homo sapiens. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're Homo and, sapiens. And the, uh, Neanderthals were Homo Neanderthalians or something. But homo erectus. The Homo Des yeah, Des Homo Des erectus. Dennis Des erectus. Des That's my favorite. Just, oh, Dennis erectus. Dennis erectus. <laughs> Whatever happened to Dennis Des erectus? Yes. I Des love Des that guy. Yeah. I still oh, have a KOME sticker. Yeah, the cum spot. Remember? Yeah. yeah. I used to sit and make donuts all night at donut shop and listen to Dennis erectus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Alan. So, uh, talking about all the all this, uh, where we're from. If we're from monkeys, how come they're still monkeys? <laughs> well, it doesn't mean monkeys are going to go away because they didn't split off. Oh, so okay. To yeah. begin with, we are not descended from monkeys, from no, apes. No, we're not. We are of the same lineage as apes. We have some of the same commonality. But we're not apes. I mean, we're not. We weren't. Didn't come from apes. Now you got Tony all confused. <laughs> no, Planet of the Apes. No, now he's back. Tony's just I desiring. Yeah. Tony's yeah. just desiring a banana. Okay. Yep. It's a great animal. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, but I, I often found that amazing uh, that you know the Homo good. Homo sapiens existed at the same time as the uh, Neanderthals, and they actually pushed them into the ocean, pushed them right to the bottom How of the mean. continent. 
Yeah, I mean, not they didn't go in there and drown, but I'm saying they went down there because they had no social structure. They died off just from a lack of social uh, structure. So. Or the teens. Let that be a lesson to America. Yeah. Uh, you know. Oh, well, we do have a social structure. We've got Facebook and we've got Twitter. <laughs> yeah, right. I could be extinct. I'm right next to the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm big. Yeah. Let, let, let's go to the beach. Right. You know. yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> let's not. Yeah, but I always found that amazing because I always thought Neanderthals like existed, you know, when all those things like dinosaurs and so on. Yeah. They always have in movies hanging out with human beings. And the yeah. fact was, they never existed when humans were around. They nope. were They're gone. Before, togas. They were they were gone before humans even appeared. Am I right, Ray? And, yes, and they were here many, many hundreds of thousands of years longer than we've been here. Right. Right. Way, way we're like a, a drop in the ocean compared to the amount of time they were. Here. And they well, said we, that, we almost we almost ended up at, at the end of the earth if Trump had got another four years. Yeah, no well, shit. Well, mm -hmm. no, but the 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 other thing was with uh, with uh, the reason why uh, uh, they disappeared was because of uh, the uh, what meteor that hit yeah, the earth. That's the theory, yeah. And killed off all the. All those, and and that's then that started a whole new world in which then man came into existence and so on. You know, I mean, it's amazing how long this planet has been around. Yeah. You know, and that's that you can go back what a, a several billion years. Yeah, four and a half billion. billion or four and a half. Oh my billion? God! Yeah. Dennis Erectus died in 2012 from a heart yep. attack. He really? was a porn star, right? No, he was oh, a. How old was he? He was a disc jockey. He was a. Uh, he, he was my competitor in San Francisco, but he could never catch up. But he was at nighttime. No, but he. Yeah. He, he was at I, I think he did. They tried to put him on during the day, and it didn't For work. For a little while, but he he flunked out, and then they put him back on on Friday and Saturday nights. Yeah. He was in San Francisco, right? No, he was in San, San Jose. Jose. KOME. Yep. Oh. Okay, I mean, which their motto, motto, the cum spot on the, the your cum dial, the cum spot right, on your right dial, right next to K O C K, the cock, K S J O, ninety two point three, the cock. Why is it the filthiest person here tonight is the woman? Oh <laughs> boy. Oh boy. Well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll try to beat Red again. She's a little embarrassed. <laughs> oh. Oh, look at, I found this article. It says, before there was Howard Stern, there was Dennis Erectus. <laughs> what? Maybe they're related. Anyway. Dennis got an erection. You say Howard Alex Stern. Bennett, not Howard Stern. Well, yeah, well, no, the point was that uh, they were both on the same station. Exactly. And the reason uh -huh. why CBS uh -huh. bought Live 105 was to get rid of me to make the co get the coast clear for a Howard Stern to come into San Francisco. That sucks. Yeah. Hey. Howard Stern. What? Next time I see him, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> give him whatever. Tony's address. It, yeah. It, it, <laughs> tell him to call uh, call, call Tony. We'll yeah. get the mafioso on it. Anyway, hey, listen, Tony that's it. I, uh, I got to get out of here because uh, yeah. the next show wants to come on and do whatever they do. I don't know. Some show. We have a good time. Uh, we got we, we got uh, yeah. we got uh, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. You almost left tonight too, huh? I I held up. You held <laughs> up. You really I did. Was, because I was here. Uh, yes. Very strong. Alan, thank you. Scott, we love having you here. Call more. We I just like yeah. I just like seeing you there, knowing you're there. Kathleen, love the fact that you call a lot and that I, that we're still uh, talking to each other after all these years. <laughs> that shows what a wonderful person I am. Uh, Larkin, John Larkin, thank you, thank you, Tony, thank you, Brian, uh, and of course Ray Renati, yeah. and the lovely and attractive uh, Charlie Wallace. <laughs> Ray. Yeah. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a w big wave goodbye back at you. Okay. There they go, folks. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there's another citizen panel to be forming next on the intersection with Jack Bishop. You'll use Skype for that, and you'll call 
GabNet Live. That's the ID you use. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Yeah, 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, get vaccinated, will you? Okay? If you're not already. And if you're not vaccinated, wear a mask. See you tomorrow night. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye.